Hi, good evening. It is March 29th, 2018, and it's no better time for us to come together and talk to you tonight about what we've been doing. And every year in March, we do our renewal for our organic certification. So tonight we thought we would tell you a little bit about why we became organic and some of what we go through every year and some of what we went through when we started um, this whole process. So, do you want to start by telling them a little bit about how we, what we had to do to become organic? Well, the, fir the first year, there's a lot of paperwork. Now, we are just entering, actually, our 10th year of being certified organic. And in the first year, there is a lot of paperwork to initially introduce your farm to whoever you decide to certify you. And the reason this is, is because they want to know everything about what you do on the farm. Your equipment, how you work your fields, what you plant, what you harvest, how you feed your animals, whether it's dairy cows, beef cows, chickens, um, off-farm inputs that you buy to supplement the farm. So when we started, we had really no idea what they would expect from us. So we got a book like this one, and this is the USDA National Organic Program, and if you've ever heard of the NOP, that's what, this is what we started with, and every year we consult this book or we consult the internet to know exactly what's changed in the NOP, and I think that was where we started here, just to right. find out what they were going to require, because we were dairy farmers, and then so we started looking in this book and talking to certifiers and we said we're already doing a lot of the things that they require. Right. You know, like grazing our cows. There's a We were already grass fed and we weren't using a lot of inputs, um, conventional inputs. We weren't using dry treatments on our cows. We weren't using antibiotics regularly. So we were already pretty proactive as far as taking care of our animals in our, and fields. In our fields, but we still had a lot to learn. And um, I think that we were a little intimidated by the paperwork. At first. At first. At first. And then once we got into it, like you said, it was a lot of just telling the story about our farm right. and conveying that to someone that... Um, could decipher or interpret if we were doing things organically and what we needed to change if if anything so well they have specifics and rules in organic to in order to qualify to be certified organic and they want to make sure that you're following all the rules that they've laid out for the certification and that there's no gray areas or misinterpretation so the first year is really the hardest where they need to learn you and your farm and your practices and how you approach problems that you may have in the future and how you're resolving problems that you have now. And that is huge in agriculture right now, especially if you're going to transfer to organic, any type of organic, whether it's vegetables or livestock production. Um, you're going to get a totally new way of thinking of things. You're right. going to be more proactive rather exactly. than reactive. And I think that's one thing too that we um, learned that we were doing is that we were already doing things differently and thinking differently than conventional. Um, and when I say conventional, we were not treating with dry treatment for our cows. We were not using an antibiotic if we got a little bit of flaking if you're milking an animal and you get a little flaking that could indicate a high cell count or mastitis. We were stripping that cow and we weren't doing a lot of the same, we weren't approaching what we were doing the same way um, our conventional counterparts did, at least the way that the vet conveyed a conventional counterpart. And some of that was because of the farm economy. You know, we... Oh, we've both worked on conventional farms too right. in the past as teenagers. 
we adapted a lot of the good ideas that conventional had and we've started some of our own new ideas. Oh, I think as we've gotten into this, we became more passionate about what we do and we're really proud of what we do um, because we have a healthy herd and we have healthy soils and we're not, we won't say that we never have a problem, but approaching things from a slower um, management standpoint and not being quick to treat an animal if, you, if there's something going on with them. Um, we've proven to build their immune systems and even the ground. We, we kind of changed everything to look at it from the soil up. Right. From a life aspect rather than a death aspect of looking at things. Right. We have cows that could be 14 and 15 years old that are still having babies and still very healthy. And that's something we really get excited about. But to go back to our certification process, you can see some of the paperwork here in front of us. Oh and I say some of it. This is what we turn into our certifier. And they review it. And they go through it with a fine-tooth comb. They go through every sentence. They go through every word that you do put down. And they examine it. We do this every year. So they compare it with last year's. And they ask if we have any changes. And we'll make comments on any change, changes we've made in our practices. Um, there's three different sections. You have to fill out what's called an NLP, which is your normal operating practices, and generally how you operate your farm. There's a livestock because we are certifying our dairy cows and other livestock we have on the farm. We have to go through a livestock chapter of it and fill out a complete paperwork so I'll say about how we handle our livestock organically. And then there's the crops and the field plans. So and that explains to them what we plant where, where we got the seed from, um, making sure that it was certified organic seed. We also explain to them any amendments that were added, whether it was compost or cow manure, or if it was a plowed down green crop. Uh, are we taking soil tests? And so that's that's a good point. A lot of what we do, everything we do, is management practices that they want to know um, are along the lines of the USDA Certified Standards. Organic Program. And they want to know about your fertility program. They want to know how you're treating cows that have problems. But um, I think one thing I want to make sure you understand before we even started for three years, our land had to have zero, it had to be managed organically. Right. Before we could certify it. Exactly. And then our animals, our cows, had to be on certified organic feed and managed certified organic for, for one, one year. year prior to selling or prior to having our first certificate. And that hasn't changed. There are um, some really good things that they insist on. For instance, that you have at least two acres of pasture for each animal that you have on your farm. Adult animal. Adult animal. And that's concerning cows. You wouldn't need that for a chicken. <laughs> well, we don't certify our chickens, but it is interesting. You really um, should, if you are going to certify your chickens organic, um, you really want to investigate what the latest guidelines are for chickens. Right. And you can find all those guidelines on the internet if you look up the USDA Organic Certification Guidelines. And they're free. You can mm -hmm. print them off and you can look at them. And even for our dairy, you can do that. And it may look scary, a lot of this paperwork at first, but once you get through it, the first year is the hardest because you have to outline everything. You have to draw maps of all your fields. Maps of all your fields and explain the practices you use on them. What's been planted there in the past, which is on most farms is good crop management anyway and good farm management as far as the animal documentation and the crop documentation. But this is just to prove to our certifier that what we say we're doing, we're doing. Now this is just the first step of a two-step process in the certification. Now we have to fill this out in March for our renewal and then we have to send them the most important part is the money. And I'll let Lynette tell you how much money it cost yeah. us 
for a 30 cow dairy on 200 acres to certify? It's just under $2,000 a year and it's um, it's well worth the money. We do get a certain portion back right now from USDA as a reimbursement and that it should be an incentive for anybody to decide to certify organic. And don't let all this paperwork scare you because honestly they're asking just simple questions yep. about things that you do every single day on your property, on your farm with your cows. And they want to know things like your animal welfare. They want to know things about your equipment. If you've cleaned your equipment out and you're using it solely for organic purposes. Okay. It's all everyday questions that you will have no problem filling out. And the really nice part is that when you do your renewal, they give you an update form and they go through and, and they list everything that you need to send them including the money <laughs> and how much you make every year off of your certified organic products. But um, it really doesn't take that long. Nope. I can tell you one of the best things to have that Peter has used for the last 30 years, and you might be doing the same thing in your life, um, he uses a calendar and he writes down every day what the cows eat, and he writes down where the cows are grazed. Now during the summer, I have learned to graze our cows and during the winter, Peter feeds the cows, but Peter always keeps the records. And it makes it very nice for both of us because he keeps track of what our cows are eating every day. And, and it's, it's a nice picture. Some of the records we have to keep is what those cows eat. And that's very important for your organic certification because we have to prove what they ate, which field it came from, and what day you harvested it, and where you stored it. It's almost like a, um, an economic balance sheet and where they can go down the line and say, okay, you've harvested this many bales of hay, and you have this many cows to feed. It's going to add up, and it's going to make sense that you had sufficient feed to feed your cattle and sufficient supplies to run your farm. And if you don't have those sufficient inputs that you've grown, they want to see where you're buying them from and making sure that they're certified organic too before you even use them. We have to, if we're thinking of using a different type of seed or if we're thinking of even using a different type of soap to wash our machines with, our milking machines, we have to clear it with our certifier first and make sure, number one, that it's in the OMP standards and it's approved. And then they'll look at it and they'll contact the manufacturer and question them and then they'll send you a, a yes or no answer on whether you can use it before you use it. Right. We have an inputs list that we have kept from day one and this just lists every single input that we use on our farm right down to our sanitizers that we use in the milk house. Um, anything like aspirin we list on this and it all has to be certified through your certifier or right. approved through your certifier. So if you're already buying a certified organic product, usually it's a it's just a simple matter of filling out a form and having them approve okay. it. And, and then, then it goes, it goes on, your, on file. your list. And now this year and we keep it very simple. And I think that's the one of the really important things to tell you is keep it as simple as possible. Yep. And then as you grow years in, into being certified organic, you can try things that, um, that might add to your plan, might add to your management system. Um, for instance, using diatomaceous earth as a fly repellent. Now we haven't done that yet, but we want to try it. So um, that will be something that we will try this summer and then what we'll do is buy a certified organic product and then turn in a um, approval form for our certifier to go through and make sure that it's approved for what we want to use it for. And then once we get that approval, we can start to try to use that on our cows. So, um, but we always do try to, to know even before we start, if it's if it's something that would be an approved substance, right. we certainly would not want to 
I mean, we believe actually in what we're doing. And the less chemicals that we can use with our animals, the better. And this is just a yearly culmination of everything that we've done last year plus what we're planning to do this year. That money that we spend for their certification, part of that goes to the certifier's paperwork needs and his office staff. And then this summer, we'll have an inspector come out. And he'll bring all of this paperwork that we've sent into our certifier. He'll bring a copy of that with him. And he'll sit down with us here. And it usually takes anywhere from six to eight hours. One day a year. And we'll walk our fields and he'll look at the maps and he'll look at our inputs, he'll look at our cattle, he'll look at our practices and our equipment and we'll go over everything, even our feed storage and look at our hay and make sure what we put down on this is what we're actually doing on the ground here. Exactly. That's what an inspector comes out to do. Right. And part of that money goes to pay him and his travel fees and his time here. And we actually get very excited when the inspector comes because we get to show off everything that right. we're it's, proud of. Right. It's also a learning curve too because he's been on other farms and sometimes if you have a question about something like you know like we talked about the diatomaceous earth for flies have you seen it on other farms you know how does it work there Do you, how, what's your thought on this you know have you seen somebody else doing something different that might work good for us so he's a wealth of information a lot of times too but so. Lynette mentioned the calendar and that hangs in our barn, it's in the hallway, and it's a daily thing that I do when I mark down on the calendar, I not only mark down where the cows are grazing or what they ate if, we, if they're in the barn for the winter, but I'll also mark down what we did for the day, what was our work for the day, um, what the weather was like. I put everything down on that, and then throughout the year, Lynette will take that and she'll accumulate all that information. And that is really helpful for us because now we can look at our fields and our pastures and say, okay, look at this pasture here, you know, we've got this seeded into it, and we've had the cows on it five times this year. Right. The regrowth has been really good. We can look at the weather and see what, how much rain it's had, and then we can look at how much milk we've made off because we've got the milk records. So we can say to ourselves, well, let's plant some more of this or a little bit more oh, of yeah. that. It, look how much more milk it made than this field that was planted into this. And it's, it's a good gauge on how well your farm's doing. Right. And then you can also look on how well your farm's doing because you can look at what you're taking off of each acre on each field. And whether it's being productive for you or if, if it would be better off in something else. Maybe not grazing it or hay or maybe into a row crop or something similar to that, you would make more money from that. Or maybe it's telling you that you need to look at your soils a little better or add right. some something to it. We to help do do soil um, testing every year. We pick out a field every year and keep rotating and we do soil testing. Now because we keep our pro, um, plan very simple, we haven't done a lot of amendments um, to our fields. Now we're very blessed here to have all class one and two soils on our farm, but that doesn't mean that things don't crop up. We have very sweet yep. soils. We want those nutrients available to our crops. So we want to know um, what those soils are made up of and what grows best on those soils. So yep. they're very indicative of the soil tests have been very helpful in helping us to plant. Like for instance, we have some fields in alfalfa and some in clover. And um, I think that you know, that our soil tests help us to make those right choices. Right. So just to wrap it up, because we don't want to take up your whole night, um, we want to make sure that you know that cert being certified organic is not that scary. <laughs> <laughs> and it is really a management, a set of management rules and practices that we follow. Now we will be happy to showcase different products and talk about certified organic products to you. But this tonight is mostly to let you know what a farm has to go through to be certified organic, what we do. And we just thank you so much for taking the time with us tonight. And, uh, and if you have I any questions, please put them in the comments below because we are more than happy to explain anything that you know you just might be wondering that we didn't cover tonight
I wanted to mention that show we saw too. Years ago, I'm going to say it was in the early 80s to mid 80s, Smithsonian World put on a documentary with David McCullough, and it was called The Gift of the Land. Hugely impacted us in the way we farm and how we looked at our soils at an early age. Yeah, he, the man on that show, he said that it's not really organic, it's just good farming practices. practices. And I think we'll leave you with that. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much and have a great night. Yep. And we will see you very soon.